Hi, I'm the Arn, and today, as promised, I'm going to do a spoiler-free review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. But before we get into it, let's do the disclaimer, which is that I talk really, really, really fast, especially when I'm passionate about something like I am about this movie. So if you can't keep up, it's just not your speed, that's fine. There's so many amazing movie channels out there right now, especially doing reviews of this movie. So if you can't keep up, that's great. If you can, then let's get into it. Again, keeping it spoiler free, but this was absolutely fantastic. So much fun. It's not, I would, <laughs> I had my expectations set pretty close to um, Maverick. It's not quite that good, but Maverick, that is, that's something else, you know. Um, but this is still very good, way better than anything I've seen in a long time. The effort, the passion that's put into this movie, into making every scene. It's funny because it actually follows very similar filming locations to um, The Last Fast and Furious. I almost kind of wonder if they like piggybacked on like filming rights or something like that so they could get it done. But anyways, not the point. But the scenes are just so much more fleshed out and so much better and more emotional in each of the same settings. So I kept comparing them the whole time, kind of watching them like, oh yeah, I remember that. It was supposed to be funny and it wasn't funny. This, very funny. Tom Cruise, he's just, oh, his chemistry is fantastic. Uh, especially him and Rebecca Ferguson, him and Hay Haley Atwell. Any, any of the actors, any of the characters, he, there's no one that in the film you feel he has tension with. I don't care what they say about the actor behind the scenes, all these rumors going around about him being a tyrant or whatever. But unfortunately, in order to get a job done well, you do have to be strict in order to keep things online. If that's the role he's taken on, then so be it, because it turns out. And this movie is proof of that. The action scenes, which I'm sure everyone was anticipating would be pretty damn good in this movie, but... Mm, mm, not a spoiler, but the train. Let's just put it that way. Holy, very good. Uh, I mean, the whole thing, the beginning, the end. It, I thought it would get painful a little bit because this is like a two and a half hour movie. Yeah, three, it's two hours and 49 minutes, so almost three hour movie. And I was kind of anticipating coming in of like, yeah, damn, it's gonna be a long movie. Didn't even notice, didn't even notice. There's no point during the movie where I like start checking and watch them. Like, yeah, it's gotta be over soon. Nope, didn't even notice. The whole three hours flew by. Um, and mostly without any breathing. So it turns out, I guess you don't actually need to breathe to survive because I maybe inhaled four times <laughs> during most of this movie. Like it starts off, you're like, oh, this is fun. And then, and then it just goes and you don't have time to breathe or think or blink, <laughs> but it's just a good thing. It is a good thing. It's so well done. So well done. The right balance of serious to funny. I was also kind of referencing back to Fast 9 again. It's Fast 9? Oh, wait, the last Fast and Furious, Fast X. Um, I was worried it would do the same thing, being a part one. I was worried they were gonna end on the similar sort of dire note. Not so bad, it was not so bad. I, it, it, very different. It was not as similar as I thought it was gonna be, being a part one, part two. Not that I had any reason to think it would be. I just, I don't know, my brain was kind of prepared for the worst. <laughs> and it was so fun, so much fun. The little jokes I put them over, it's not MCU humor. It's not, doesn't pull you away from the serious moment with the humor, it's well done. Another thing with Tom Cruise where he can do really funny, kind of very night and day-ish type humor, and he can do really serious emotional moments, and this shows shows both of them. Again, no spoilers, but the Venice scene, very serious and beautiful, and oh, so well. Um, again, trying not to go into spoilers, so I don't want to go too much into things. Overall, clearly, you get it. Very enchanting, very fun, action was amazing, cinematography's great, the visuals are, are stunning, the concept is freaky and fun, but tipping towards freaky, because I personally am very bothered by the whole emergence of AI right now, mainly because as a graphic designer, it, it's coming for me. It's coming for me first. How the frick are we living in a world where, it, ugh, not going to it, not going to it, just not a fan, not a fan. So this movie made me feel a little vindicated and a little freaking terrified, but overall very good. Let's quickly run through the cast because they're, they're all, there's some exceptional performances. There was really nobody that, that drew it down. There's no one that stood out like a sore thumb. Uh, Tom Cruise, we've been through him a bunch already, but he's so fantastic. I don't know if you've gotten it from watching any of my other videos. I love Tom Cruise's performance. He is an incredible actor. I do go with sort of the, the things being said right now that he's the last true movie star, the last true superstar. And it shows because he puts his heart and soul into every project. Like everything he does is to be the best not like of himself, it's like to best his own records, to best his own movies. Every movie he does is the best he can do. And it's fantastic. And I'm not talking about his like early career. I mean like now. Insane, it's insane 
the things he can milk out of a story, the things he can milk out of a performance, out of the concept, out of the stunts, the action scenes, the vehicles. I mean, oh, he's so good, so good. <laughs> Haley Atwell, I love her in Captain America. Uh, and I love her in this too, very different. It took me a minute at first because I kind of expect her to be the same kind of refined, proper, tough, but kind of proper British woman, and she's not. It's a very different role for her, and it, it works. It, I, I caught on to it a little bit. Like, it's very different, and I'm impressed with her ability to do that different. And again, she has great chemistry with Tom Cruise's character. They're fun the whole time. Scenes in the little yellow car. Let's put, it, put it there again. Oh, it was very good. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson. I love this actress. She's strong and confident and beautiful. Very Galadriel in a sense, like just her essence in every role she plays. She can be physically tough. It, ugh. But she's, <laughs> I just got distracted because I was looking at a picture of her. She looks like buff as fuck. I'm about to say she's a top small frame, but not in, not in um, IMDb's picture. Anyways, what was I talking about? She's very Galadriel. This very sort of, you know she's intimidating. She's a very intimidating presence, but very elegant, feminine. And that's her whole thing through this, especially this movie. I think in the other ones too, but She's very feminine, yet strong. You know you shouldn't mess with her, but she can be sweet and soft and, and kind and just very feminine. And she trusts uh, Ethan Hunt and their relationship. It's it's not like sexual, but it's so, ugh, it's really good. I wish they would have done a little bit more with that whole thing. I know they touched on earlier movies, but it really felt natural in this one. Love that, ugh. Well, that's the only point with her. And it's, again, not about just, if you watch it, pay attention to her fighting style. I love this. It's captivating when you see it on screen. It's very fluid. It's very graceful. It's very elvish, very elvish. And I think it may be, I'm wondering if it's not an influence from like her Dune training for, for her Dune role, because it's gorgeous. It's very fun to watch. It's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the other movies with her in them to see if that's the carryover or if that's not a new thing, but love that. Um, Vanessa Kirby. I like her I love her. I love all these actors. I love her too. She's got that like that cocky confidence like fun like I'm gonna kill you and it's gonna be fun kind of attitude but it's not evil. It's more like I don't know innocent in a weird way. I really like her performance. She's unique. She stands out. She's fun. She's not dire. She's very proper and elegant and confident but you know she she'll have you killed by her minions but oh she's very cool. Love her performance in this. Uh, Palm Clementif? Palm Clementif? from Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, very different character than she's played, at least that I'm aware of before, and fascinating. Very well done. She's a little, a little unbelievable. Early. Like, she, she's pretty tiny. She is pretty tiny. So some of her moves, you're like, okay. But overall, still very good. The emotional complexity of her character, once you get, when the movie starts, you're not gonna believe it, but once it gets going, it's very good. Um, Isai Morales, oh. I'm not, I don't think I've seen this guy in things before. I'm, I maybe have, I don't know, but talk about Silver Fox, fucking hell. <laughs> He's fantastic. I don't even, talking too much about anything about him is kind of a spoiler, but very good villain that's problematically attractive, but that's just, it's fine. <laughs> Simon Pegg, oh, you know, Simon Pegg. He's funny, good fit. He, he plays himself. He's very natural, very solid from where he's been in the other movies. Uh, Ving Ramis, same. Feels very natural to it. Uh, there's a lot of new ones that I'm not gonna go into. Let's quickly touch on Carrie Ellis. I it took I knew he was in this, but it took me a minute to recognize him, even though it's clearly him. But he's talking an American accent. It throws you. It, the, <laughs> I couldn't quite focus on what was happening because his accent it was was not him. It was very strange, but he did good, as always. But that that threw me for a loop there. Hmm. There's a bunch of like kind of smaller parts, uh, kind of close up talking about Shay William. Shay William. That sounds right. Shay William. Again, I apologize for a bunch of these names. I'm not great on pronunciation. Kind of goes in the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Anyways, Shay William. Love his character and things. I really liked him in was it Kong Skull Island. Loved his character in that, and I like that he has kind of the similar. This like I've seen everything, done everything. Still a badass, but you know, just, just, I just don't care anymore. It's kind of like, just chilled out with the world. Nothing, nothing shocks him until it does. But Really like his character. I like that I, the way his character plays off of uh, Greg Tarzan Davis's character. Uh, kind of a young agent and the old wise agent working together. Everyone was like, you yeah, know, it doesn't matter something about the other guy that's still young and thinks about things and cares about things and it kind of reinvigorates the older guy. I don't know where that they're going to move on with in relation to Hunt going forward, but it is an interesting point uh, where they end and I think they both did very, very good. 
go ahead and move on from actors and again keeping it spoiler free which it's hard when there's so much you want to talk about but I'm, I'm getting better I'm getting better at it uh kind of just the overall takeaways that come from it action is fantastic cinematography and music pairing fantastic Tom Cruise is fantastic and I really love especially in this context and the way I always talk about bad female characters these are really good female characters there I'm gonna touch on some more I'm finding a bunch of them right now I'm actually currently watching Babylon 5 and I want to talk about that from there too, but I'll get to that later. I'll get to that. I'm gonna work on a video on that one as soon as I finish rewatching them all. But uh, for right now, the female characters of this are very well done, all very different. They're th it's funny, there's not one size fits all for a female character. It's crazy, I know, but there isn't. Very different characters, all strong in different areas and all very feminine in their strength, but in different ways. There's like the traditional fem feminine, then there's like the sexy feminine, then there's sort of the femme fatale feminine, there's like the crazy feminine. Very different, very elegant, love it. So if there's any aspiring movie writers out there that are looking for a way to write good female characters, here you go. And lastly, again, I can't reiterate enough, the, the reliability of current Tom Cruise movies. It's just, it's fascinating, fascinating to me that there's so many hit and misses all around going off, like fail after fail after fail after fail. His movies are consistently fantastic. Fantastic. They're somewhat formulaic, but they're really not. I mean, basically, you know, if you go to a Tom Cruise movie, you're going to get solid writing, awesome action, and tons of heart. Like, you can feel how much everyone involved cares about this, and that is so important. So important. And him not caring what anyone thinks about him, not caring if everyone thinks he's the nice guy or the nice coworker, but just getting it done right and making sure that everyone's doing their work and doing their part to turn out art like this. All for it. So... With that, I will leave you guys. Highly recommend. Definitely check it out. Highly recommend watching it on the biggest screen possible because it is one of those epic type situations. Again, it is a almost three hour long movie with trailers and stuff. It'll be three hours long. So if you need to bring water or something, heads up to that. Maybe not for like little, little kids because they're going to get rambunctious. Um, PG-13, it's currently in theaters. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Goodbye. Please consider like, sharing, and subscribing if you'd like to help support me and this fledgling channel to see where it goes. Thank you.